Action Comics 1053. We are still in the Dawn of DC era. And this book has kind of like proven a couple things to me about like this new Superman initiative. I thought this book was kind of solely going to focus on the rest of the family. But two characters that are kind of like featured prominently in this issue are Clark and John. Now, makes sense. They do sell. John in particular is a new brand that people are really liking. I just didn't expect them to be the central figures of this book. I'm fine with it. No complaints. It does kind of like go back and forth on like what's happening in the other titles of the books. But okay. Let's see what you got, right? This is the Metallo kind of issue where it's like he's the main threat of this arc. We'll get into it. This book kind of is also setting up what Steelworks is going to be, and that comes out August or September. But it's cool. It's pretty cool that we're actually having like a Superman initiative in the comic books again. Like this is like what we're doing. This issue opens up with John Henry Irons. He is walking out of the Steelworks building and he's like having like a voice recording he's going to send to Nat. Because Nat pulled up like some virtual concept model for like what the Steelworks Institute's going to be. This is going to be like their, you know, Star Labs adjacent thing. Like an institution, an academy for young people to like learn and like build their trade and that kind of thing. But they're going to model it off the memory of Zedim Rosa, which is like a Kryptonian institute. So it's going to be both based on technology of Earth with inspirations from Krypton, thus kind of like connecting John and Nat to the larger Superman universe, which is kind of exciting. As he is like sending that voice memo, he is accosted by those weird creature people things that Metallo was operating on. They're calling him names like Collaborator and Alien Lover. So he like steals up and he gets into a fight with a couple of them just as the Superman family shows up. Not the whole family. I guess we kind of like slowed it down a bit because we had like a hundred people in the last issue in one panel doing like one thing. So just a couple of them show up. Clark being the main one, he's in here help fighting the cause, but... They are deadly and scary, and a couple of them, like, blast a bunch of, like, Kryptonian radiation through Kara's bloodstream. So she's kind of down for the count. We have to get her to Kellex, and Kellex can help fix her up a bit. Essentially, we knock them out for now, so Connor's going to go take Kara away. And we have a little moment where we see Clark is talking to Keenan. Just kind of like, Keenan is in the like, state of mind, like, so this is how we're going to do this. We're going to save the guys that are attacking us and trying to kill us, who are like literally saying hate speech about us and our people. And he's like, yes, that's what we're going to do. Because that's how we win this fight the right way. We save the people that don't want our help as well. And this is how we do it the right way. But Keenan, kind of on the fence about it, he's like, okay, I guess that's going to be what happens. Those are like small character moments for everybody so far. Connor kind of like lashes out like, this is shitty, what are we doing? Keenan's like, I don't know if this is working. Even John Henry Irons had his own moment there to figure something out. So Clark leaves this room and he goes to talk to Lex because we know that John Corbin is like hearing a voice in his head that we're all assuming is to be Lex because Lex helped modify his suit. But when Superman goes to talk to him, this is where I'm like, oh, is this going like before or after the events of Superman, the ongoing book? Because he hasn't physically gone to see Lex yet. He's just hearing Lex's voice in his mind. And this, he, like, sees him, but it's also like, yeah, like, my offer to you still stands, so I guess it's kind of after, because he presents the offer then. So this is, like, the first, like, meeting of the two of them in this new Dawn of DC adjacent storyline, so okay, that makes sense. So Clark is just kind of like, okay, choose your words carefully, why does he think you're in his head? What's going on with that? What's happening to him? He's like, well, I don't know, but if he's hearing voices, hmm... Something tells me there's a larger thing at play here that neither of us are fully aware of. Now, we'll get into it a bit here because we do have, like, the scene where we see that Corbin is, like, building a bigger exosuit or something. He looks like he's falling apart at the seams, like his flesh is ripping apart. A big metal spine is appearing out of his back. The guy is being ripped to shreds, and it's not looking good. And there's, like, a voice in his head of his sister, Tracy, who is trying to tell him, like... You gotta hurry up, you gotta find me, they're doing bad stuff to me. He has a moment of realization, like, maybe my entire life would be different if I didn't hand our father the gun that day, that it changed everything, it showed us the power that we wield in our hands. Which is kind of a strong moment, especially from Johnson, who does have, like, that history 
he's like he's uh, ex-military isn't he i do believe he is or he has some history associated with that so having that moment of like where things go wrong and how like natal is kind of like a new world soldier in this kind of thing going against maybe an army he doesn't fully believe or a concept he doesn't truly understand starting to have his doubts but because it's his sister he's willing to commit to them bigger and we see like well maybe the place that his sister is being held maybe or maybe not is more dangerous and deadly than he could have imagined and we see like a scene where she's tied up with like syringes sticking into her body and tubes all along her and the not real versions like you gotta get superman you gotta kill his whole family you gotta take him down part by part or they're gonna kill me now we do see a bunch of like tubes and stuff and, and i was first like is this going to be like our one hint that Brainiac is the larger overarching villain? We know he's showing up some point because like the actual like poster they're showing for the Dawn of DC is a bunch of just stuff towards Brainiac. But I don't think this is going to be the Brainiac tease. It doesn't really make sense that he'd want Metallo or have anything to do with Tracy. He'd probably have bigger ambitions. In the Superman comic book, we see there's a secretly shadow organization of like evil scientists in Metropolis who are experimenting and doing different things to Superman's rogues gallery, like Parasite and like Bizarro. Maybe there's a connection there and they're doing something to Metallo too. It is entirely possible. But we cut back to Metropolis where everyone's staying at the house. We have the twins, Otho and Ossel, who are, you know, you know, the twins, they're from War World, you get it, it's working fine. Lois is like, I'm getting on the scene, we're gonna deal with this, I'm coming down there, Jimmy, we're doing it, we're gonna get it done. So, John's in charge of the kids for a minute, he's gonna be babysitting for a minute, but he also is just like, hey dad, can I talk to you for a sec? So they have like a, a like a speed, a speed force, just like a quick fast talk where he's like, hey dad, do you wanna play like some Coney Ball sometime? He's like, dude, I would love to play Coney Ball for you, I thought you gotten too big for that, but we'll make it a weekend thing, we'll bring the kids down just to have a good time. It's going to be really good, you know, really cool, really cool. He's like, cool, my son wants to hang out with me. What more do you want? That's awesome. But that's not really what John wanted to talk about, but he doesn't really have the time to talk about it. So he watches his parents leave while he's babysitting, and he kind of just leaves the leaves the room of the twins to go be alone with himself, but Ocel isn't going to have that. And he's like, do you hate us? He's like, no, I don't, I don't hate you, but... Ossel's kind of upset, realizing that he's literally wearing John's clothes, and he's, like, younger and the, the younger son to Superman, and, and there's all that baggage that comes with that. He's playing with his toys that used to be just strictly for John, and, of course, that toy is, like, what, what's the name of that puzzle box he's playing with? It's like, no, it's good that we made them and we're expanding the family. I just didn't realize how seeing you kids here would affect me with the time I lost being their son like we all kind of talk around what we went through and what I went through but I don't really I didn't really think I'd feel this in, until I started seeing what I kind of missed with you and your sister it is not your fault it's something that happened to me so that's kind of interesting John having like that layer of jealousy or regret that he never got to actually experience this moment in time that's really exciting. Somebody did one weird thing with John a long time ago, and now we're actually having some good moments and character beats for him learning a lesson, which is very exciting. So he's like, okay, we'll hang out for a bit, we'll go play some games, everything's fine, we're all happy. But when they head back to the main room, they see that Otho has left, and they start watching the TV when there's like a big explosion downtown, people have been killed, somebody's gotta do something. But who comes to the rescue? It's one of the super twins, and Otho is on the scene to help out, clearly taking initiative in a direction that her brother is in, where he's kind of like, okay, why does this older brother not like me too much or not like react to us too much? She's like, I don't care. I'm just going to go do something. That's pretty exciting. Good way to end the book. Everybody kind of got their moment, which again is very impressive for a book like this, where like 100 characters can each have an individual moment to shine. You like to see that. You like to see that in good artwork and good coloring. Just really fun. Very, very curious to see where this is going to go. Of course, we do have the backups still. We have the Superman and Lois backup, kind of like the return of Clark and a young John in there. It's pretty fun and interesting. Makes for some very cool experiences. And we have the Power Girl backup, which is all about John as well. And these weird stuff going inside his mind, which also kind of leads into the Power Girl special we're going to be getting next. Because the villain in that might be Johnny Soro. Interesting. It sounds like we have a bunch of stuff going on. 
and it's really cool. This book continues to be interesting, going into some cool directions for the Superman family. Like, if you were to tell me, like, a couple years ago, like, we're going to have, like, 12 different Superman characters coming together, I would have been like, we don't need that many. But the voices have all been distinctive, and it's more about the symbol than it is about, like, the Clark identity. So that's very exciting and makes for some really good stuff. We're doing some cool things with Superman, and it's genuinely cool and exciting, and I can't wait to see the future of these books. It's pretty cool. So, Action Comics 1053, I am going to give an 8 out of 10. So thank you all for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.